A Week in Paris Itinerary, What to See and Do Are you planning a week in Paris? Great news! That's just about the right amount of time to spend there, though granted, I could spend months at an end there without ever getting bored. I am sure that in that week you will fall in love with it, as I did, and resolve to go again, as I will. With a week in Paris you will be able to visit all the top attractions and even wander around to discover the most charming neighborhoods. I know what you're thinking, a week in Paris seems a lot, and you can just swing it. But really, please, don't. Paris is a massive city, commuting from one place to the other takes time, and with the massive crowds of tourists it gets all the time you are better off planning your itinerary and scheduling all your visits to the tourist sites. I get it, you don't like planning. That's why I am here. I will be putting together a week in Paris itinerary for you, which will guide you through the city's best sites and sites. The only thing you have to worry about is booking your flights, and your accommodation and getting skip the line tickets for the recommended attractions, don't worry, I will tell you whenever this is necessary. Continue reading for a great itinerary for a week in Paris and get tips on how to move around, how to skip the crowds and the lines, how to save money here and there and how to have a good time. How to use this itinerary for a week in Paris Before I get into the details of this itinerary to see Paris in a week, I need to stress once again that even though you may think you have plenty of time to explore the city, you can't do it without skipping the line or timed entrance tickets to the most popular attractions. Paris is a crowded city, and you just can't swing it. Places like the Louvre or the Eiffel Tower get sold out weeks in advance and if you don't buy your tickets before you go, you may end up stuck in the line at the ticket counter only to find out that everything is sold out and you can't visit. For the purpose of this itinerary, I will assume you have a week in Paris, which in theory means you have seven or, even better, eight nights there. Keep in mind that, as a seasoned traveler, I hardly ever count the first day in the total amount of time I spend in a place. If you are coming from the other side of the world, you will be tired after a long flight and or jet lagged, and you should take it easy, doing a food tour at most. Besides, if you are flying into Charles de Gaulle, it will take you a good two hours to get through customs, collect your luggage and get to your hotel, and that's in the best case scenario. Tip, take it easy on the day of your arrival. Get to your hotel, unpack, shower and explore the immediate surroundings. If you feel like you have a lot of energy, opt for a guided food tour. This private food tour is a good option as you can pick the time you want to do it. This other one is in Les Moray and starts at 2 p.m. Tip, get out early. It's the best way to avoid massive crowds. Good to know, this is a fairly packed itinerary, but I have structured it in a way to minimize the commute between one attraction and the other. You can follow the itinerary in reverse on most days, and even mix the order of the days. Pro tip, opt to visit the Louvre on a Wednesday or Friday, when it is open till late so you can go in the evening when it is not nearly as crowded as usual. Tip, you are traveling, not on a catwalk. Wear comfortable clothes and shoes. If you want to create a perfect travel outfit that makes you look smart and at the same time comfortable, look a cool for inspiration. Tip, have lunch on the go or opt for a quick bite. With all the nice bakeries, you won't have a hard time getting a good sandwich. These are the best bakeries in Paris. Finally, continue reading for your well-crafted itinerary for a week in Paris. A week in Paris itinerary. Day 1, Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe, Champs-Élysées and Tuileries Garden. I recommend starting your week in Paris with a bang. Go to the Eiffel Tower for fabulous views of Paris, then admire the tower in all its glory from all viewpoints. Walk to the Arc de Triomphe and the Champs-Élysées and continue to place de la Concorde and finish off at the lovely Tuileries Garden. Map of Day 1 Paris Itinerary To download today's map, click here. The itinerary is fairly easy to follow. You will start at the Eiffel Tower and then walk your way towards the Louvre. Good to know, to get sunset or evening views of the Eiffel Tower and from the Eiffel Tower, follow this itinerary the other way around. The Arc de Triomphe du Carousel, near the Louvre, will be your starting point. Eiffel Tower 
Practical information, the Eiffel Tower will be open daily from 9.30 a.m. to 11.45 p.m. The ticket office closes at 10.30 p.m. Stairs are open from 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. There is no other way to put it, if you have a week in Paris, the Eiffel Tower is a must-see. In fact, it should be the first attraction you visit. Built in 1889 for the World Expo, it measures 324 meters and until 2004 it was the tallest building in France. It currently is the highest man-made observation deck in Europe, at 276 meters. Warning, you need to get tickets in advance to visit the Eiffel Tower. Tip, I recommend getting the earliest access and factor around two hours for your visit from the moment you arrive to the time you leave the premises. These are the best tickets and tours of the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower Evening Audio Guided Tour Eiffel Tower Second Floor Priority Access Eiffel Tower Skip the Line Ticket with Summit Access Eiffel Tower Summit Guided Visit Champ de Mars Free Attraction First opened in 1780, Champ de Mars Park is located next to the Ecole Militaries. It's a favorite of tourists who love hanging out there at weekends or on special occasions to have a picnic or to just spend time with the family. The views of the Eiffel Tower from there are incredible, and good news. It's free. Free attraction. Once you are done taking photos of the Eiffel Tower from Champ de Mars, cross the bridge to get to Trocadero for more views. Tip, if you can are an early bird, go to the Trocadero for sunrise. You will have the place to yourself, for stunning photos. Arc de Triomphe Practical information, the Arc de Triomphe is open daily from 10 a.m. to 10.30 or 11 p.m., depending on the season. It is closed on the 1st of January, the 1st of May, the 8th of May, morning, the 14th of July, 11 November, morning, and the 25th of December. If you have a week in Paris, you should definitely walk by the Arc de Triomphe but also go up to take in the views from it you can see all the way to La Defense, the modern side of Paris. The arch was erected to celebrate war victories and as a homage to those who died during the French Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars. Tip, make sure to get Skip the Line tickets in advance here. Champ Elysees Free Attraction After visiting the Arc de Triomphe, you can walk all the length of the Champs-Élysées to Place de la Concorde. This boulevard is lined with nice boutiques, luxury stores, restaurants, cafes, and more. It's home to the Lido, one of the most popular cabaret shows in Paris. Place de la Concorde Free attraction Place de la Concorde is Paris' largest square. Located between the Champs-Élysées and the Tuileries Garden, the square was built in 1772 when it was named Place Louis XV. It was later renamed Place de la Revolution. It's here that King Louis XVI and his wife Queen Marie Antoinette were executed during the French Revolution took place. Take care to notice the fountain that dates back to the reign of Louis-Philippe and the obelisk it's actually been taken from the entrance of Luxor Temple in Egypt. Tuileries Garden Free Attraction Practical information, the park is open daily from 7 o'clock or 7.30 a.m. to 7.30, 9 o'clock or 11 p.m., depending on the season. The beautiful Tuileries Garden is located at the end of the Champs-Élysées and right after Place de la Concorde landscaped by Vos le Vicomte, the same person who designed the gardens of Versailles, it's a gorgeous park. If you walk their length, you get to the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel, right outside the Louvre. Good to know. On the southwest corner of the garden there is the Musée de la Rangerie. You may have time to visit since, after all, you have a week in Paris, but keep in mind that the last admission is at 5.15 p.m. If you walk this day's itinerary in reverse, you will definitely manage to visit. In case, get your tickets in advance here. Day 2, Louvre, Palais Royal and Seine River Cruise since you have a week in Paris, you can devote an entire day to the Louvre, the world's largest museum. Once you are done with it, pop by the Palais Royal, a fantastic photo spot, and then walk towards the river for your Seine River cruise. Map of Day 2 Paris Itinerary You can see the map of your Day 2 itinerary here. 
you will need to make your way to the Eiffel Tower to embark on your cruise unless you opt for a hop-on hop-off one which also stops right by the Louvre. Louvre Practical information, the Louvre is open every day, but Tuesday, from 9am to 6pm. The Louvre is closed on the 1st of January, the 1st of May and the 25th of December. The Louvre is the biggest art gallery in the world. Once a fortress, in the 1700s it became an art gallery. It is home to some of the finest paintings and sculptures in the world. Among the most notable pieces, you will find Da Vinci's Mona Lisa and the Winged Victory. The Louvre tends to get quite crowded, not to mention sold out. Make sure to purchase your tickets in advance. In fact, I advise taking a guided tour so that your knowledgeable guide will be able to take you around the museum avoiding the crowds and providing insightful information about the pieces you will be admiring. The following are the best skip the line tickets and guided tours for the Louvre. Ultimate Louvre Skip the Line Guided Tour Louvre Museum e-ticket Free Attraction This is one of my favorite places in Paris and I am sure you will love it too. The palace used to be the home of Cardinal Richelieu, who lived there until his death in 1642. It then became the property of Philippe II Duke of Orleans, who held the throne as Louis XV became king aged five in 1715. It currently is the seat of the Constitutional Council and the Ministry of Culture. The striped columns exhibit makes it a fun place for photos. River Seine Cruise There is no better way to end a day of exploration than relaxing on a Seine River cruise, during which you will get stunning views of the Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame and other places. It certainly is a touristy thing to do, but it's romantic and fun, so why not? Opt for a sunset or evening cruise for even better views. There are many to pick from, some include champagne and others even offer dinner, whichever one you pick, read the description and the reviews. You can book your River Seine cruise here. Day 3, Musée d'Orsay, the Latin Quarter and Isle de la Site. Day 3 of your week in Paris itinerary will be about art and sites. After visiting Musée d'Orsay, you will wander around the Latin Quarter and make your way to the Isle de la Site. Map of Day 3 Paris Itinerary You can download a map of your itinerary here. Use public transportation to get to Musée d'Orsay then just enjoy walking. Good to know, on Thursdays, I actually recommend following this itinerary in reverse as the museum closes at 9.45pm. Musée d'Orsay Practical information, Musée d'Orsay opens Tuesday to Sunday from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Thursdays, it closes at 9.45 p.m. If you have a week in Paris, you have enough time to visit two museums. Musée d'Orsay is a rather obvious choice other than the Louvre, especially if you love art. Its collection of Impressionist art includes the works of Monet, Manet, Renoir, Van Gogh and many more. If the collection is not enough to make you want to visit, you may want to know that the building is stunning too. This once was a train station, Gare d'Orsay, built for the Universal Expo. The museum regularly houses special exhibits, there was one about Degas when I visited. Check the website to see if anything is on during the day you intend to visit, and if so factor in some extra time. You can explore the museum on your own but I recommend renting an audio guide, and obviously a skip-the-line ticket, to guide you through the most relevant pieces on display. These are the best guided tours and skip-the-line tickets for Musée d'Orsay. Musée d'Orsay Reserved Access One Day Admission Ticket Musée d'Orsay Dedicated Entrance Luxembourg Gardens After a week in Paris, you really have to go to Luxembourg Gardens. This lovely park was built upon orders of Maria de Medici at the beginning of the 17th century. There is a palace which currently houses the French Senate. If you go during the summer it is a great place to get some shade as there are many trees. Don't miss the statues of the 20 French queens and Medici's fountain. The Pantheon Located on Montaigne Saint Genevieve, the Pantheon is the burial ground of French personalities such as as Rousseau, Voltaire, Marie Curie, Alexandre Dumas, Victor Hugo and Emile Zola. 
It was built between 1758 and 1790 to be a church but was turned into a mausoleum during the revolution. Practical information, the Pantheon is open daily from 10 a.m. to 6 o'clock or 6.30 p.m. depending on the season. You can get tickets here or here. Shakespeare and Company Free Attraction Shakespeare and Company is one of the most beautiful corners in Paris. This independent bookstore sells books in English and regularly holds events, workshops and seminars. The building where it is located, in the heart of the Latin Quarter, used to be a monastery dating back to the 17th century. The shop opened in 1951. Make sure to look for the cat, but only pet if her if she's ready for it. You know how cats can be sometimes. Saint Chapel Practical information, Saint Chapel is open every day from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. It is closed on the 1st of January, the 1st of May and the 25th of December. Entry is 11 euros and 50 cents for adults. Saint Chapel is one of the most beautiful churches in Paris. This 13th century Gothic church is famous for its floor-to-ceiling stained glass windows. Factor in around one hour for your visit. Get a skip the line ticket to make sure a swift entry. This option costs 11 euros and 50 cents, which is the official price. Notre Dame. Partially destroyed by a fire in April 2019, Notre Dame remains an incredible sight and you should make it a point to at least pass by to admire it from the outside. Day 4, Versailles. With a week in Paris, you can't skip Versailles. If you only spend a day away from the city, it should be here. I will leave you the chance to go to Disneyland on another day. Practical information, the easiest and cheapest way to get from Paris to Versailles is by RERC. Make sure to get a return ticket from the train station in Paris to avoid the line at the train station on the way back. Versailles is the symbol of all the excesses of the French monarchy. It used to be a hunting lodge which was turned into a massive castle upon orders of Louis XIV who decided to move his court there to keep it under his eye and control it more easily. You have a full day to explore the palace, the gardens, and the nearby Trianon estates. A guided tour is a good idea to get you started. Most last around two hours, after which you are free to explore on your own. These are some good guided tours of Versailles. Versailles Palace, Gardens and Estate Tickets Versailles Palace and Gardens Full Access Ticket Versailles Palace Access to All Areas and Fountain Musical Show Day 5, Montmartre If you have a week in Paris you can spend an entire day wandering around Montmartre, one of Paris's most charming neighborhoods. You can visit the Moulin Rouge, Paris's most famous cabaret show, get your tickets for a show here, the Seikaka. Romano-Byzantine Basilica, that started being built in 1875, and then go in search of the hidden corners of Montmartre. Tip, try not to go to Montmartre at weekends as crowded beyond belief. Map of Day 5 Paris Itinerary You can see the map of your Day 5 itinerary here. I have included the main highlights of Montmartre, but there are plenty more to discover. Guided Tours of Montmartre I recommend starting your exploration of Montmartre with a guided tour. This is a truly charming part of town, with lots to see and many hidden gems that may be hard to discover if you are on your own. Below is a selection of a few good guided tours. Montmartre two-hour walking tour, this is the tour I did. It's a group tour sold on getting your guide for 18 euros. You will have a very knowledgeable guide that will lead us swiftly across the busy streets of Montmartre while sharing interesting facts and information about this part of town. Seikaka and Montmartre tour with an expert guide, another excellent tour that costs less than 18 euros but whose main focus is the Basilica. Montmartre two-hour walking tour in English once a day at 2 p.m., this small group tour is a more expensive option. Family Experience Montmartre Tour It costs 35 euros and it is a very good option for families with children. Day 6 I am leaving you two options on this day, one to remain in Paris and visit one of its most beautiful neighborhoods, and one to head out once again to Disneyland. The second option is probably more suitable for families with children. Option 1, 
Pelakis, Les Marais, and Centre Pompida. There are many cemeteries in Paris. If you decide to visit just one, it has to be Père Lachis. After that, you can move on to Les Marais to wander around and end your day at Centre Pompidou, for some lovely street art and local scenes. Map of Day 5 Paris Itinerary You can see the map of your Day 6 Paris Itinerary here. Père Lachis. Free Attraction Practical Information the cemetery opens every day from 8 o'clock or 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 or 6 p.m., depending on the season. This famous cemetery opened in the early 1800s. Famous people such as Edith Piaf or Dawes lead singer Jim Morrison are buried here, along with the likes of Balzac and Oscar Wilde. It's a vast park where you can wander around for free, but you can also consider a guided tour as it is huge and you can easily get lost. You can book it here. Les Marais. Free attraction. This is easily my favorite neighborhood in Paris. It's where I stay whenever I visit. It's an area packed with lovely cafes, bars and brasseries, quaint streets, artists' ateliers, boutiques interesting museums such as the Museum of French History. It just is such a pleasant place that you should not skip it, especially if you have a week in Paris. Centre Pompidou. This is one of the most intriguing buildings in town. With a week in Paris, you even have time to go inside. It houses the National Museum of Modern Art, Europe's largest modern art museum. You can admire the work of artists such as Picasso, Matisse, and Kandinsky. Make sure to hang around after your visit. The square behind it is lovely and a spot for local families. To go inside, get your tickets here. Option 2, Disneyland Paris. If you are traveling with children and have a week in Paris, there is no way you can avoid Disneyland. In fact, many would tell you that it is a great escape even for adults. This massive park, divided into two parts, Disneyland Park and Walt Disney Studios Park, can't possibly be seen all in one go. If you are in search of a proper adrenaline kick definitely ride the rock and roller coaster Aerosmith, it's the fastest ride in the park. Practical information, Disneyland is located in mont la Valley, 30 kilometers from downtown Paris. Get there by RER, getting off at mont la Valley. From there you just have to follow directions. Make sure to get Disneyland Paris tickets before you actually get there, as the lines may be long. The following are some good options. Disneyland Paris one-day ticket, a day pass to either Disneyland Park or Walt Disney Studios Park. Disneyland Paris one-day flexible ticket, an excellent option slightly more expensive, but perfect if you need to be flexible. Disneyland Paris one-day ticket with transportation, in case you are not a fan of public transport. Day 7, Montparnasse Tower and Catacombs. The best way to end your week in Paris is by admiring it from above once again. That's why you should climb Montparnasse Tower. Map of Day 5 Paris Itinerary. Download today's map here. Today is a fairly easy day for you. The Catacombs Practical information, the Catacombs are open Tuesdays to Sundays from 9.45 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. They are closed on Mondays and on January 1st, May 1st and December 25th. If you have a week in Paris, make sure to go to the Catacombs. Once a limestone mine, and located 20 meters below street level, at some point towards the end of the 18th century the mine started being filled with bodies because local cemeteries couldn't accommodate more bodies. A guided tour of the catacombs is a must. Book it here. Montparnasse Tower Practical information, the tower is open daily from 11 to 10.30 or 11.30 depending on the day. Easily the ugliest building in Paris, the added value of climbing Montparnasse Tower is that you don't see it once you are actually in and the views from it are stunning. You can see the Eiffel Tower and more. The building dates back to the 1970s and it's Paris' second tallest building with its 210 meters. Get your tickets in advance here or here. Bonus, Galerie Lafayette. Once you are done exploring the Montparnasse area, head to Galerie Lafayette Houseman. 
This massive department store was opened in 1912 and even if you do not intend to do any shopping, it's actually fairly expensive, you may still want to admire the impressive building from the inside and the outside.